Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with my first episode of Genesis Inbox where I answer your questions posted to me via YouTube comments, Twitter, Facebook, Xbox Live, etc. This show is meant to be viewed as sort of a podcast. You can listen to it while doing something else, and I just include my face and rather low camera quality, unfortunately, for your convenience if you want to watch my actual reactions to these questions. Now, I would like here to pause and mention that you can go to the directory below this video in the description, and you can jump to any of the questions that I'll be asking myself or that have been asked to me and just hear my answer to that specific question so you don't have to watch through the other questions in case you already know the answers to some of them. So that's there for your convenience. As it is, let's get into the first question. These questions are the more interesting ones I picked, and um, the first one is rather simple but rather important. Alejandro Martinez asks, does having a female Spartan make it harder for opponents to hit you? And James B. also asks, why is your Spartan a, go a girl? And he has wide, um, wide-eyed face afterward. Okay, there are a few reasons for this. Let me go ahead and state some broad general overview. And I know at least Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. Changing your Spartan's emblem, sex, color, or any sort of armor configuration whatsoever, even if it includes super rare armors, does not change your in-game coded hitbox whatsoever. In fact, all of these changes that you can make that I just mentioned are purely cosmetic. They just affect the look of your Spartan and absolutely nothing else. There's, here's a, is a very simple example. You have a horn on your helmet. You can, when you pre-ordered the game, or if you bought the Game of the Year edition, I believe, you got a helmet that has a, a, a unicorn horn on, on the top of it. This does not prevent you from going in low doorways. For example, if you look closely in theater mode, your horn phases right through objects. It's, a, it's like it's not even there, to be honest, okay? So I just need to throw that out there. Now there is one change that you can make, specifically in Halo 3, and that is changing into Elite, which does change your in-game coded hitbox. And if you've played Halo 3 SWAT, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's really dumb. Um, I'm so glad they removed playing as a freaking Elite. And this is one, just one of the things that separates, I feel like, pay, players who played a long time versus players who haven't. All of the players I've heard who haven't played Halo for that long at all are like, oh, I want to play as an Elite again, blah, 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 blah. And then everyone who actually has played the game for an extensive period of time is like, no, do not put Elites in normal, like, play, like, you can just choose which one you are. Never do that. Um, in Halo Reach, Invasion was fine, where the Elites were str slightly stronger but spawned with different weaponry. That is totally cool. That's totally different. Two different teams round base switching that that's fine all right but um yeah wow so that's the only cosmetic change you can make that actually affects it so no the bottom line is being a female spartan absolutely not does not change your in-game coded hitbox i like to state a few other things and in halo 3 you could use the katana uh, which was a samurai sword on your back if you tried to sh shoot or stick that with a grenade your grenades go just right through it it's it's not even there the boxes or cameras you can put on the side of your head in Halo Reach. Not even there. They're just phased. Try sniping one. Try sniping through the side of one. It, it doesn't, it's not part of your helmet. It's just a phased object on the side that isn't actually there in the in-game coded hitbox. Um, why is my Spartan a girl? Because I, in Halo Reach, wanted to explore what the female Spartan sounded like. Believe it or not, it was kind of a little bit um, unfortunately, out of boredom. I was just like, okay, you know, the male Spartan sounds, you know, I'm getting kind of tired of that <gasps> with the Halo Reach breathing sound when you're sprinting, which is a, a little exaggerated, but I understand why they had it there. Um, so I just changed the female, and I've been a female ever since. I'm going to be a female in Destiny, um, and I just like playing as female characters. I think part of the reason is because I like dumping on other people as a female Spartan. It's just cool. And there are definitely certain armor configurations, specifically Venerator and Wetwork Helmet, um, which look really sick on a female Spartan for whatever reason. Pretty cool stuff. It's just my personal preference. Moving on, uh, Joshua Reyes asks, So all in all, what's your almost Onyx verdict? I realize it's just a beta, but will it dethrone Halo 4? He's specifically talking about Titanfall. So you could basically summarize this question as, 
will Titanfall dethrone Halo? Um, this has been briefly stated on other videos, so I'll just cover this very um, simply. Absolutely not. Um, Halo is an exclusive to Xbox, whereas Titanfall is both Xbox and computer. Um, however, it is a very different breed of game, and in my personal opinion, Titanfall is a very, very well-crafted, addicting, cool-looking fad. Okay, It is something where there may be a select group of people who play it for a very extended period of time, but the majority of people who play Titanfall will not play it till their generation 10, not even remotely close. Very unlike Halo 4, where we saw hundreds upon thousands, of, or you know, many, many thousands of people reach SR-130, playing all the way up to the maximum rank in the game before leaving. Um, but with Titanfall, um, it's very well crafted to pull you into a certain degree, but inevitably what you eventually find is that it is simply another challenge-based XP ranking up system. There is no competitive ranks underneath it, and at first when the game came out I didn't have custom games. I know it, the game has custom games now. Props to Respawn for actually listening to all that. But the game still lacks theater mode and other things that really should be in a game of this caliber. I also personally, as did many countless reviewers, find the game's campaign to be lacking, um, to say the very least. Trying to focus on a little... Um, window in the top right hand corner of your screen that's playing out a campaign piece while you're trying to play a multiplayer match inevitably you end up just not even listening to whoever's in the top right hand corner okay at least the majority of players did I know I did because I was just focused on winning the multiplayer match so overall the game has to have more features and have more compelling of a campaign and storyline for people to continue to play it it is not a halo killer and it's not a call of duty killer it's not going competitive anytime soon. I'm sure there are going to be certain tournaments for it that could have paid paid out money and things of that nature, but not nearly on the caliber of Call of Duty or Halo or anything of that nature. So there is no worry as far as that's concerned. Um, I know as far as my channel, I realized within probably two weeks that Titanfall was not going to be a game that I'd pursue for a long period of time, and that I, even Halo 4, which many people criticize, I would far rather play Halo 4 than Titanfall. In my personal opinion, again, most of this is just my personal opinion, but I hope you guys identified to some degree. Moving on, Fritz Nation asks, Hey Genesis, excellent gameplay. Subbed immediately. Learned a lot from your videos. Perhaps you can do some live commentaries? Um, I wanted to specifically address this question because live commentaries where you are talking while doing your video and you're specifically commentating on the video or trying to make the gameplay good and your commentary good just for a YouTube video, not necessarily to work with your teammates. If I did a live commentary, my live commentary would be winning the game and calling out and et cetera, et cetera. It would not be, oh, welcome to my channel. You know, I'm playing Halo 4 today, and this is the topic I'm going to talk. No, 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 no. I don't do that. Okay. In fact, as it is, my gameplay dri dips dramatically when I start discussing off-topic or even Halo topic things inside the game with my friends in a lobby, I, my gameplay goes to crap so fast it's not even remotely funny. I need to focus on the game, and oftentimes, just by focusing on the game, calling out, I end up performing way better than if I was talking to someone else about something different. I find that my mental focus is very, very one-sided in nature, okay, or very narrow. It's very tunnel vision, should I say. Um, and I'm not as flashy a player or as um, multitasking a player as maybe people like Modest Major or that sort of thing. However, my laser focus and my ability to hone in on certain things gives me advantages in my own respect. So I am perfectly fine with the way I am, um, but live commentaries, as you can probably tell by the answer to this question, are not going to be coming or doing anything like that in the future. I commentate sometimes when I'm playing live on Twitch.tv, which you can check that link out in the description, but um, that's about it. Um, I prefer to play my game and have my voice focused towards playing on the game So and winning. Moving on, um, Jarek Montepalco, hope I'm pronouncing that right, asks, Hey Genesis, why don't you play with your subs in Halo? You're my subscribers in Halo. 
couldn't reply to this message because he hasn't linked his Google Plus account yet. So um, for those of you who don't know, if you cannot reply to someone's comment on YouTube, it is because they have not linked their Google Plus account with their YouTube account. For all of you who haven't linked your Google Plus account with your YouTube account, please do this. Otherwise, I can't directly reply to you, and you won't receive a notification when I do try to reply to you. Okay, so moving on to his actual question, I consistently play with my subscribers in Halo. However, what you have to realize is that it, when I view my subscribers in YouTube, I'm not able to find your gamer tag. Okay, unless you also post Halo videos, which n the majority of the people who subscribe to me don't. Obviously, they're tips and people looking for the tips and tricks. People who are just have a YouTube account so they can subscribe to people and watch and have their own um, subscriber list feed, should I say? But not people who actually post. So I don't know your gamer tag. Okay, you have to send me a message saying invite. And in fact, I encourage anyone who wants to play with me. You have to be willing to play a wide variety of playlists. And you probably are going to need a positive KD ratio. But overall, just send me a message over Xbox Live, a text message saying invite, question mark. Okay, that's all I need. I'm going to tap on your message, go to your profile, and invite you. As soon as I get on Halo and see your message in my inbox, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Okay, I'm not going to just accept your random friend request and then play with you. That That's not how it works. Okay, I've actually stated this in other videos, and I'll probably have to create a brand new video on this topic, unfortunately, um, about why I don't exactly accept people who send me random friend requests. First thing I do is probably go to, go to your profile and go, this is my YouTube channel. Thanks for, you know, thanks for sending me friend requests. This is my YouTube channel. You can check it out. And then I will invite you to my game if I'm online and it looks like you're online. That's about it. Okay. It's up to you to play with me in Halo 4, not me to do play with you. You have to do the work first by sending me the message. So moving on, I hope that answers your question. Um, Sysemic sees, man, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, says, one of my many questions I wanted to ask a pro player is how you maintain pressure, maintain pressure while playing. I think what he means, how do you still play at a competitive level while you are under pressure? However... I'm going to approach this from two angles. He says, how do you maintain pressure while playing? That's pretty obvious. You need to be aggressive with teammates. And specifically on maps like Adrift, where it's very easy to do this, you need to flank people. Then you can be aggressive because you know the people that you're attacking are going to be weak from another angle. And they're also going to be very disoriented because they're being shot from another angle. So you can be insanely aggressive then. Uh, that's a pretty simple answer to your question, but I hope that answers that. Um, how do you play well while under pressure? There is a wide variety of ways you can play well while under pressure, but I will tell you from my own personal experience that under the age of 15 or 16 or even 17, I was not that great under pressure. I would choke constantly, and it was really dumb. And even then, even now, I still do choke under pressure occasionally. It does happen, okay? Um, Right now, I'm just much more focused, and my hand is far more steady. It's very simple. Um, you get to the age of about 18, 19, 20, 21, and your hand-eye coordination starts to, to peak, and you're, you suddenly find that you know, you're not missing. You know, your, your, your shot is really on point in just two or three games you know, of playtime at the beginning of a uh, day of playing. You know? um, and it boils down to how much have you played the game. If you haven't played the game very much, you're going to choke constantly under pressure. If you play the game constantly, you'll get to the point where, um, as uh, Modest Major kind of puts it, um, you go on sort of autopilot mode, and you just sort of start blowing through people um, without even knowing what you're doing. Um, he, he, Modest Major puts autopilot mode in kind of a negative light because it, it takes away from your enjoyment of the game because you're not really experiencing the game as you fully should with 100% of your senses, should I say. With me... When autopilot mode comes on, um, I oftentimes lower my voice communication in the game, and I'm super focused on staying alive, and I'm trying to just, you know, really, really hardcore play my heart out. Um, that's my autopilot for whatever reason. I uh, my autopilot is I drop my communication level to zero, basically. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I hope that under helps you understand a few of the reasons, a few of the things. You'd probably need to ask a pro player how they maintain um, pressure while playing, or those questions. Um, I'm not a pro player, so just throwing that out there. 
I don't get money for playing Halo, and I've never placed inside the top 16 in a Halo tournament for several thousand dollars prize money, which is the technical definition in my book of what it means to be a pro player. Anyway, um, moving on, the Zeus asks, nice tips for free-for-all. Is there going to be more Titanfall videos or just Halo? Uh, probably just Halo. I may come out with a video about Titanfall with a few um, edited together clips on my best moments of playing Titanfall. Okay, I had some pretty you know, sick multi-kills or whatever it was. Um, killed three Titans in a row by ripping all three of their um, pilots out, and that was in less than a minute and a half of time. Um, clips like that, you know, but ultimately, um, the game is a fad, and I'm not going to really be pursuing it anymore. It's just, um, I want to play something on the Xbox One that um, is not for looking back over its shoulder and being backwards compatible with old consoles. I want it to be pushing forward the technology. I want it to be, you know, really, really innovative and cool. And I think Destiny might be that. Um, cross my fingers. Okay. Moving on, Godfire asks, so if Halo got back on the pro circuit, would you ever enter, tur or would you enter tournaments? And um, the bottom line is, at this point in my life, since I'm about to be going to summer, um, school at my local community college and I'm going to be pursuing um, college classes in the fall at that community college as well and I'm working 40 hours a week. The answer to that is a definite no. Um, I am also 21 years old. I am far past the age where I should be trying to pursue this thing. You have to realize that I wasn't even able to play the Halo campaigns till I was the age of 16 if I do recall correctly. I wasn't even allowed to play all the way through them. Okay. And I did play them in order, and I did play them all the way through, but I got into hey, the Halo online circuit um, like a year or two after Halo 3 had come out. Okay, So, yes, I've watched way more MLG tournaments than the average person. I've actually been to an MLG tournament and spectated it in Columbus, Ohio, when um, Instinct uh, swept the entire tournament and not losing a game. Uh, that was insane, actually. Um, I have right here the Instinct logo band that I always keep around my water bottles. Um, that was handed to me, that was thrown out at the tournament. So there you go. Um, I also have a hat right here, MLG hat. My gamer tag's on the back. Unfortunately, the hat is too small for me. That's why I don't wear it. It gives me a very bad headache. It's very tight. Um, and it was signed by the pro player Pistola. Okay, I got your Pistola, who came in second at the Global Championship behind Ace. I hope you guys can see that pretty well. It's a silver, it's a silver uh, marker, but um, yeah, that's proof that I've been there, um, done that, and um, watched countless online um, Halo tournaments, just live streamed and everything. I, I eat that stuff up. That is my television, to be honest. That and YouTube is my television. That's what I watch. I don't watch television. That's what I watch. Um, as it is, um, players like Straight Sick, I Got Your Pistola, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, got into the Halo scene way younger than the age of 21, okay? And while I'm not counting myself out prematurely, okay, I will have to say that there is little to no way that I can travel the distance to a tournament and compete in it, specifically given the tendency that I am an online kid. I don't typically play custom games unless it's for a tournament and we're practicing for it. Um, that's why, to me, playing custom games in Halo 4, while I know this statement will burn a lot of people, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of point if you're playing competitive customs in Halo 4 because there are very little tournaments to play for, and especially some of the settings people keep using that are not even showing up in some of the tournaments. Um, I just don't see the reason for it. In Halo 3 or in Halo Reach, there was so much more reason and need to play 1v1s and 4v4 customs and everything of that nature. You knew the settings. MLG game types was the gamer tag. You go to that gamer tag. You download the settings. It's everyone uses the same stuff. Their latest versions, blah, blah, blah. And in Halo 4, it's just nothing like that whatsoever. The consistency across the game types of competitiveness is not there. And it's unfortunate because AGL having not paid out their players and shutting down and all that business, um, the tournament cir circuit for Halo 4 has died out a lot. 
Um, it's not died out completely, as many people have tried to point out to me. But um, going into Halo 5, while I'm sure there'll be tournaments, I'm sure that I probably won't be competing in them, not only because I fully expect my hand-eye coordination to dip out after 22 or 23 years old, but on top of that, I want to continue my YouTube channel. I want to continue doing what I'm doing right now, and that is teaching people who aren't as good at the game as I am or don't have it, as much knowledge of the game as I do to get better at the game. Um, if I went pro, as you'd put it, I would put everything into that. Um, everything. You know, I would stop playing radar game types completely. I'll just put it that way. I would, I would stop playing radar game types completely. That's another thing about Halo 4 because... Um, even uh, the current competitive playlist, Proving Ground, has game types with radar. Throwdown is almost non-existent at this point. And yes, you can play it in customs, but as I've just stated, custom games are not really important to me unless I know the settings that are come up going to come up for a tournament, and I'm gonna, you know, I, I will practice the living heck out of that. My dedication is not the issue. It's the other things that are drawing away from my time from Halo 4 and gaming in general, um, I have to attend to these things. I have to attend to my future. Being a 21-year-old, I need to get out on my own. I need to, um, you know, get a college degree of some sort and get to the point where I can support myself 100%. I'm pulling my weight a decent amount right now, but I need, I need to be working towards those goals, as any person who's 21 um, should be. And... Um, at that point, at this point, I'm fully willing to stay committed to Halo and YouTube videos. But going into the pro circuit, I am we way more well aware than the average individual what that takes. I have um, vast experience on the topic, so um, I don't think you'll be seeing me competing in any like pro professional tournaments. My dream is to join a big team battle team in Halo 5 and kick the living crud out of everyone we face. That would be cool. Okay, that's just what I, that's just me. Um, I'd love to have a big team battle team even in Halo 4, but that's just me. Um, Alright, moving on to the next question. Hope that answers that. A little long there. Spasmods X15937 Oh my gosh! Asks, when you get Halo 5, will you ever play Halo 4 again? Please discuss on YouTube. Well, I'm doing that right now. Um, have I gone back and played Halo Reach since Halo 4 came out? I think twice, briefly, to play Big Team Battle, and that was it. Okay, so the answer to that is most likely no. I have no idea why I'd go back to play Halo 4 unless I was replaying the campaign to catch myself up and remember the storyline exactly up to a certain point. That would make perfect sense. Um, for example, before Halo 4 came out, I played through Halo Combat Evolved, Halo Reach, Halo 2, Halo 3, all that business before Halo Reach came out. So I'm just ready for the storyline. I don't think I'll do that for Halo 5, but um, the Halo 4 has enough of a bad reputation and has enough of a massive decline in its population of players currently playing it. Um, more people bought Halo 4 than any previous Halo game. Less than 10% of those people are currently playing it online. Completely unlike Halo 3. Okay, so I'm just pointing that out. This is like a year, a year and a half after the game's been out, and it's it's gotten to this, you know. So probably not, and probably not way more so than if I was moving from Halo Reach to Halo 4, and you're asking, well, are you going to go back and play Halo Reach again? I'd probably say maybe, occasionally. I'd probably say maybe occasionally that, but going back to Halo 4, probably not. Um, especially if Halo 5 is what I think it's going to be, which is pretty darn good. But that's just my opinion, because of all the things I've been hearing. Um, what happened to your Thruster Pack Guide video? This is just a general overall question that has been asked. I was going to create a Thruster Pack Guide video. It's like 30 or 40 minutes long, extremely in-depth, probably like 40 or so different little clips in there teaching you how to use the Thruster Pack, giving you exact details at the beginning on exactly how it works, how you should exactly use it, whether jumping or or constantly thruster packing is more faster than sprinting. I mean, it, it was insanely detailed. I still have all the clips. Don't have necessarily the commentary over them, but the bottom line is um, I was using a slightly older version of iMovie. This version would crash randomly while you were creating a project, and if you restarted your computer, 
when iMovie was not going, it would actually remove your project. Now, all your clips would still be in the iMovie editing software, but your project would be deleted. It was gone. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't back up my computer um, since I had created the project, which I'm now doing constantly. I'm backing up my computer to my external hard drive a lot just to keep everything in order. Since then, I've moved on to the latest version of iMovie. So much more stable, it's not even remotely funny. has never deleted any of my stuff and is way better editing tool than the previous version of iMovie. But I still have to recreate my Thruster Pack Guide video from scratch. Seeing as the low population in Halo 4, which really goes without saying, I'm not extremely motivated to create that video. I'll just put it, I'm just going to be blatantly honest because the amount of time I put into it and the, the, the how far I got in creating the video was insane and then it was deleted and I was just so insanely crushed and I was just like, wow, you know, what the heck am I going to do? It was a really bad feeling and I think I'm going to recreate the video eventually, but I'm still getting over that. So please, please give me some patience here. Um, that was a tough, a tough loss, should I say. Um, that looks like it's going to cover it for all the inbox questions I have. Um, I cannot see that I answered all the ones in the list. So um, if you see me say, you know, reply to your comment or something and say, I'm going to answer this in my next Genesis inbox video. This is, this is what it's going to, this is it. This is what it's going to be. So I hope my opinions weren't too dramatic. If you want to um, question me about certain opinions I have in this video, maybe about Titanfall or the competitiveness of Halo or custom games in general or now, whether you like or disagree with my opinions, let me know in the comments down below. Um, like the video, subscribe. It helps out a lot in terms of helping other people to find these sorts of videos. And I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.